Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 355, and uh, for this episode I wanted to do something a little bit different. Instead of just covering one game or uh, an interview, I thought it'd be fun to do a roundup uh, episode where I look at actually three different games, uh, specifically three different indie CRPG dungeon crawlers. So a, a pretty specific genre, uh, but I think you'll see quite a bit of uh, diversity uh, between and among these three games I've selected for this video. Be looking at Dungeons and Darkness, Swords and Sorcery, and the Fall of the Dungeon Guardians. A lot of great stuff here, so without further ado, uh, let's look at the first game, Dungeons and Darkness. So the first indie CRPG on my list is the most recent one to come out. This came out September 30th, uh, 2016, and it's called uh, Dungeons and Darkness, and it's developed by a Japanese developer named Yamuichi Project and published by Playism, and I have to say I'm uh, pretty impressed with the quality of this one. I can tell they put a lot of effort into making these uh, walls and reflections and the, uh, the the lighting effects and the shadows. Uh, they really paid attention to detail there, and it looks pretty good. You know, you can notice a few little uh, artifacts here and there, but you know, all in all, it's a pretty good-looking game. The music and sound effects are, are really nice as well. Uh, I'm not really sure how big this team is that made the game. It's a little hard to tell these days, really, because all these uh, tools like Unreal or the, uh, the Unity engine, uh, they put a lot of this really sophisticated graphical uh, technology, like the bloom effects and all this lighting stuff, uh, pretty much at your disposal for, for free, basically. So it's, it's pretty uh, amazing what you know one guy or one gal or even uh, a really small team can accomplish. You can make something that looks pretty you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, commercial quality, that's pretty encouraging. Of course, the real question is, is it fun to play? You know, as for my part, uh, I'm having a good time playing this, even though it's really not the kind of game that I would have uh, created myself. You know, I'm more of a, I'm more of a fan of those uh, party-based games with turn-based combat, and this is the uh, more Skyrim-like setup with the single character and action combat, but yeah, it does have some nice touches. You can sort of see the indie, uh, indie status poking through there with just a text-based interface for your inventory. Uh, there's no ragdoll or, or puppet uh, that you can look at to see what the armor looks like and so on. So they saved some money on <laughs> not having to create all those, uh, all that armor and, and character models there, I suppose. Uh, the combat is uh, pretty satisfying, although it takes a while to get used to. I, I died several times because I couldn't seem to find just the right range you're supposed to get on these monsters to attack them. I would miss, and monsters didn't seem to have that problem, so uh, that's a little bit sketchy. But once you get the hang of it, it's okay. Let's see, got some new shoes. You know, I, I love this ability here to crystallize. Uh, the currency in this game is crystals, so it really... I wish more games would have a feature like that. Basically, if you don't need an item, you can just instantly convert it to cash uh, right from your inventory. You don't have to go back to town and sell stuff and you know deal with all that. Uh, oh, this guy's about to kill me. Deal with all that nonsense. Let's do a fireball. <laughs> uh, still not dead. Come on. Doing my little Grimrock shuffle there. Try to keep this guy from walloping me. Looks like I got him. So yeah, you can learn some tricks like that eventually. Uh, a little shuffling around. <laughs> I don't know if that's part of the intended strategy for the player, or if it's just the limitations of the AI, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna go with the strategy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, so let's see, I gotta kill some more slimes. Uh, it looks like these guys are on the ceiling. There's another one. I like that. Well, I hadn't seen slimes like that since the last Googler hangout, huh? <laughs> Yeah, okay, let's uh, keep on moving here. Let's see, I gotta kill some more. There's another one of these. What is that, a uh, ogre? Orc? And you go down pretty quick. Oh, there's some more. But you do have to be careful not to get uh, attacked by more than one of these guys, because they don't play around with the damage. And I have died many, many times. This is on normal difficulty. Can't imagine what those uh, harder ones are like. Now some of these items I'm picking up, like the Orc Claws, those are collectibles. I'll be able to sell those once I get back to town. 
I bring out my lantern there. Yeah, I think he, uh, they really nailed the atmospherics of this dungeon. And uh, one thing that's cool is when you go on other quests, you know, different parts of this big dungeon will open up. So if you find uh, closed doors and things, uh, don't you know, don't worry about it. That could be for another quest. You'll come back here later. Uh, again, nice use of... Uh, I mean, I'm sure that, that amounts to they're trying to reuse their assets, right? But nothing wrong with that. And it makes a lot of sense. Well, what do we got there? Another slime. One of the things I do like about this interface is it's pretty quick. You know, once you figure out basically how to how to put on armor and stuff, you, you don't spend a lot of time uh, messing around with your inventory, trying to shuffle things in and out, making room, and just dealing with stuff that's just really not all that fun when you get down to it. So I think this developer was right to just keep the uh, player's attention focused on exploring this dungeon and, and fighting stuff. There's also some nice uh, hidden areas. You know, I don't want to spoil those for you, but if you keep a and your eye peel, it actually it's not hard to see. <laughs> so, you know, some of the walls will be a different color or something, and you can go over there and click on it. And now that'll be a not so subtle secret area. Uh, then again, you know, I've only played this for about two hours, so this could be, you know, maybe things get a little more subtle you know, as you go along. I don't know, but uh, there's plenty of challenge here, even in these initial levels. So got some trap tools there. That could be a nice uh, strategy. Try to lay that on the ground and uh, get a monster to walk over it. You can see all this uh, gear I've got here. I'm starting to get some nice upgrades. There's a few kind of questionable things going on there, like silver rings too. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be able to wear two rings or if that's just a little glitch. That's one of the things you worry about when you're playing these indie games. You know, a lot of the a lot of times they let you do something, and you, you're not really sure if you have somehow exploited the, <laughs> you know, the game engine somehow, or if that's intentional. Uh, so I guess that's just one of the downsides of uh, of an indie game. I can't think of everything. Now here's one of those uh, not so subtle secret areas. They have uh, cleverly hidden this by <laughs> making the wall a, a very distinctive color. You know, I don't know if all the secret areas are that. Uh, that hard to find. You know, I think I might actually be able to complete this dungeon without dying this time. <laughs> you know, sometimes it feels like they uh, somehow the game knows you're trying to make a, a review. So it's just making everything go just right. Not uh, have me dying embarrassing deaths uh, left and right. But uh, trust me, it's definitely tough. And I did die repeatedly uh, trying to learn how to play this. So let's see. There's my Claymore plus one. I guess that's, uh, yeah, I guess the yellow means it's equipped. You know, I have to say, if there's one thing uh, that's kind of a letdown with this game, it is this bit uh, that we're just looking at, you know, shoes plus four. You know, it's not very creative, and it's not very really all that exciting just to see, oh, I got shoes plus four, it's better than my shoes plus three, you know. Uh, if you don't have a little ragdoll there, a little puppet to see the shoes, so you don't get that sort of... Uh, Visual aesthetic reward, if you will, for the improvement, and uh, they don't really have fun names. Uh, just shoot plus three. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a. It feels a little bit cheap in that in that way, but uh, otherwise, you know, I guess they put all of their assets into making the dungeons look good, and didn't worry about the the character uh, himself and her herself, I guess, and the uh, what the armor and weapons look like. At least you got the sword there and the shield. Represented. Uh, there's a uh, there's another one of these guys. I'm I'm actually kind of curious what different weapons are in the game. And oh, there we go. Looks like we're done, so we can return to town. And I'll show you uh, before we go here one other cool thing about this. You can trade in these uh, collectibles for gold. Nice little system here. Again, you can see they definitely save some costs by not uh, having portraits or paintings or. <laughs> Pretty much just a scroll with some text on it. You know, if that's uh, if you can overlook little limitations like that, and you know, you have to wonder how much does it really add to have all that. So we can see my level has increased. I'm not entirely sure how this system here works. You see, like defense mastery, mana bonus, and all of these things. Uh, the manual says you can select skills at the end, but you can only choose them once. I don't know if that means uh, that I had to select this and then I'm stuck with that until I come back to the end, or if it's uh, maybe not even at a point in the game where this even matters at this point. You know, I wish it had a better manual because I'm pretty confused about that. 
Uh, now, one nice thing, though, is if I go to this uh, tool shop, in addition to buying these potions, and by the way, I'm, I'm guessing the reason that there's not a lot of uh, ways to heal yourself in the dungeon is that they want to give you something to spend your money on. Uh, so you could stock up on these potions. Uh, but there's also some pretty cool uh, items you can buy for the, the inn. Let me just get, grab a couple of these while I'm thinking about it. And I'll show you this. Uh... Yeah, so I see some of the stuff down there, like the cabinet and shelf. I uh, can't afford that yet. There's a skill set scroll. I guess that's what I need to do the, the, the skills. But let's say I'll buy this uh, bookshelf and a stove. Uh, so let's, let me show you this real quick. So then come back to the inn. And I'll put that down. And you can see that gives me a, uh, a bonus to, I think, my mana and intelligence. Uh, so that's pretty pretty nice. I guess eventually if you play enough dungeons, you'll be able to have a completely stocked in with all the uh, the furniture you want and have some nice nice uh, you know enhancements that way. Let me go ahead and grab a... Yeah, what else is there? Stove. Used for simple cooking. Now I'm pretty sure this won't actually let me cook something if you're thinking of a Skyrim, but... It does give me a constitution bonus of a uh, plus three, so let's uh, rate this game then. I'm going to say presentation, graphics, artwork, all that good stuff. I'm going to go three out of five on this. Uh, the dungeons look great. Love the shadows, the lighting, and all that. I'm a little disappointed you can't see your own character in, or any inventory items. And I think there's a little bit too much text you can see. I like some uh, illustrations, some cartoons maybe to balance this out a little bit. Level of design, I'd probably give that maybe a 2 out of 5. Uh, the, at least the starter dungeon seems pretty flat. Uh, once you get over the impress, impression of the graphics and the torches and everything, it, it seems pretty uh, plain. Uh, so 2 out of 5 on that. Uh, Gameplay-wise, it's also going to be somewhere between 2 and 3 out of 5. It's definitely kind of neat learning how to do the combat and, and finding all the secret areas. and It's, it's, it's pretty... Uh, it's, a, it's a decent system for combat. Uh, not my favorite by any means, but but not bad. So uh, let's go overall for this game, uh, three out of five. It's pretty impressive for an indie game, and it's definitely worth ten bucks, but probably not going to be your favorite CRPG. All right, let's uh, move on then to the next game on the list. This is Swords and Sorcery Underworld Definitive Edition, and it's developed uh, by Older Bites, who's actually a fan of uh, the Matchet Show. And uh, it was released on December 15th of uh, last year, 2015, so still fairly recent. And I have to apologize uh, uh, for the graphic quality of this video. Uh, none of my usual screen, screen capturing programs like Fraps, uh, none of that would work for this. <laughs> so I ended up having to use Cam Studio, and it was just an exercise in anguish and agony, uh, even to get this quality. So I, don't, I have no clue why uh, it was giving me such fits. Uh, but the actual game, it looks a lot better. Uh, you won't see all of this uh, blurry lines on the screen and all that. So my apologies for that. Uh, but with that said, I mean, you can tell this is not a uh, commercial quality AAA kind of game here. Uh, this is a this is what you'd expect to see when somebody says you this. Uh, here's an indie game made by a you know one guy basically, or a small team. And you know if you can overlook that aspect of it, which I I think you should. I mean I think that's kind of silly to expect every game to look like, uh, you know, Skyrim. Uh, there's a lot to like about this game. Uh, it's very difficult for one thing, very old school in terms of uh, the difficulty and the challenge level. It reminds me a lot of uh, my first experiences with the uh, first Baldur's, I mean, not Baldur's, uh, first Bard's Tale game, rather, uh, back in the day. You know, just getting to the store to buy some equipment is a deadly trek. You'll probably die many times. Uh, fortunately, though, he did build in uh, this little uh, arena, sort of right in the middle of town, right outside the inn. So you can run in here, uh, get into some scrapes. Uh, if you survive, you can go back to the inn and save. And when you go back to the inn, it heals all your characters back up and saves the game for you. So that's that, Unless you're dead. Uh, so hopefully, if you die, you're just screwed. I guess you have to reload or create another character. Uh, but if you can do this a few times, you'll build, uh, gradually build up some experience grinding it. And then you can... Uh, get some better equipment and more skills and stuff and your, your characters quickly get more powerful so i always appreciate a game i like the games where you just start off with just nothing right and these guys you know they have a walking stick and a sling and that's about it uh, so very humble origins but then you know for relatively quickly if you play this uh, with any kind of intelligence 
you know, these guys will quickly get more powerful, and then you'll really start to see a difference. And, you know, I really like that. Uh, also, this game is, uh, it doesn't rely, even though the graphics aren't as sophisticated in some ways as that other game, it doesn't rely so much just on text. You know, you can see there's a lot of uh, these nice, uh, I guess, paintings or drawings are throughout. Uh, so quite a few of those uh, to have some visual interest in here. Not all just in your imagination, but uh, if you like this game, I think it's going to be because you can appreciate the challenge of this and you like the combat. So let's let's talk a little bit about this the combat here. And so as you can see, it's, it's kind of like, again, sort of reminiscent of a game like Bard's Tale or maybe a JRPG. Uh, we have all the enemies out in front of us and the front two ranks there are in the melee range. And the second rank and the third ranks are theoretically uh, behind them. Uh, I say that because, again, I don't know if it's a glitch in the game or maybe it's intentional, but every now and then somebody in the back row would suddenly be in melee range. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, I'm just kind of uh, a little confused about, uh, you know, what exactly I'm looking at here in terms of tactics. You know, it looks like this, these uh, jack-in-the-boxes here on the right-hand side, looks like one of them's behind the other one. But uh, when you look just out in the center of the screen, they look kind of side-by-side. Side. Looks a little bit behind. Uh, so again, the it's a little bit confusing. I, I think it could be a little bit clearer to see you know, exactly uh, where these guys are in terms of proximity to the party. Uh, but otherwise, it uh, makes a lot of sense. We've got uh, discrete turns here. We've got that text box there that tells you exactly what, what's going on. Uh, you have uh, lots of spells in your grimoire. You have ranged attacks, uh, sneak attacks, special attacks. It's uh, a pretty nice system. And again, what I like about it is once, it takes a little getting used to, right? But uh, I mean, once you get this figured out, you can really just, you know, go through lots of combats really quickly, uh, which is something I really like about a role-playing game. I don't like a lot of elaborate, you know, sitting around watching uh, the same old spell animations over and over again, the same, you know, skeleton slowly shuffling into position, uh, a la Pool of Radiance, uh, Ruins of Myth Draenor. Uh, this is uh, quick and dirty, especially once you master these keys. I'm not, I'm not quite there yet, uh, but it doesn't take long. Uh, now, over there on the lower left-hand corner, you see that uh, skull with control A on it. Uh, that turns on your artificial intelligence, which <laughs> goes really quick, but, <laughs> man, it's, uh, it's pretty much suicide using it at this point. You need to be very careful and make sure you're healing up your characters. It, it won't heal your characters for you or cast spells or... Uh, anything like that. So that, that's really just for use when you're up against a bunch of wimps and they can easily you can easily kill. Uh, now here in the uh, store, uh, you can see you get some sort of an idea of what's going to be available later on. And you got plenty of equipment to equip there. You know, your head, neck, back, all that stuff. And, and you can also have uh, characters. In this game, your characters do have inventories and their packs, and I guess that might become an issue eventually. Uh, I didn't ever get to that point where I was, uh, you know, having to go back to the town all the time with a bunch of loot. Which I think there's, you know, that's, that's the sort of thing there you might not even really notice as you're playing a game, right? But uh, when you play a lot of bad games, you get an appreciation for uh, a really good design is going to keep you doing the things that's actually are fun to do and minimize the tedious crap. You know, the, oh my god, I got 16 potatoes in my inventory, I can't add the other, this turnip, and <laughs> sometimes you're like, what the heck am I doing? Why am I playing this? You know, what, what, what is this? This is ludicrous, right? You know, this is not, this is not what you sign up for. Uh, you sign up for this, right? Combat, leveling, you're running to get your gear, you go back and get more powerful, then you can explore more of this town, and you can really see these characters getting more powerful as you go along. I mean, that's, that's all the stuff that I like about a uh, computer role-playing game, and it's all here in this one. I will say of the three games in the video, this is the one, believe it or not, that I had the hardest time uh, tearing away from. <laughs> like, I don't want to say, I don't need to play this for 100 hours to, to put it in the video, right? I kept telling myself that, but then like, you know, maybe I should just get you know, a couple more levels in, and, uh, you know, it, it was it's sort of that one more turn thing kind of crept up on me, which uh, I think is uh, considering, you know, that, uh, the resources the guy had to work with, uh, the assets here, and, and was still able to achieve that level of, you know, addictive gameplay. I think that really says something. That makes me wonder what the guy could do with a, uh, you know, big budget, <laughs> you know, stand back. That'd be uh, really a game to see. 
Uh, and I wanted to show you this uh, catacombs here, and this is, let's see what level my characters are here. Uh, still pretty low level. I think I might be level 2 or level 3, and, and like the Bard's Tale, you have to find the place to level up. <laughs> it's not all that hard. Uh, pay him some money, and uh, you can get some new powers and stats, and you really uh, have some fun with that. Let's see. A little turned around here. Uh, with this game, uh, clearly the weakest part is going to be the interface. Uh, it looks like an early Android or iPad game. Uh, you're going to put this in terms of... Uh, CRPGs, maybe like early 90s era, maybe even late 80s, I don't know. Uh, with that said, though, the, the cartoon style drawings, or however, I don't know how exactly you would describe that comic book style. Uh, it looks good, you know, that looks pretty professionally drawn there. Uh, the vampire and the ghouls, and I think he might have uh, had a friend to work on that. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, that looks okay. Uh, there's just not a lot going on with the... Uh, uh, 3D effects or, or dynamic lighting or, or anything of that sort. Uh, so very Spartan in terms of graphics. So uh, functional, uh, but not necessarily beautiful to behold. So I might have to go as low as a 1 out of 5 on the graphics. Maybe 2 out of 5. You know, I could be talked into 2. Uh, audio and music, you know, not a whole lot. Uh, so again, maybe 1, 2 out of 5 on that. Probably the strongest aspects of the game are, is the combat, you know, surprisingly uh, sophisticated. Uh, you might not realize uh, how complex the combat is just by looking at the uh, the graphics, but, the, you know, there's, there's quite a bit you can delve into, quite a few uh, different ways to approach these battles, and it'll take you probably take you uh, several tries before you get to where you can uh, be strategic enough to survive a couple of uh, rounds of combat, right? You know when to run <laughs> uh, as fast as you can back to the end to, to heal back up, but then you're uh, right back into it. Uh, and also, it's got a pretty nice story. I didn't uh, go into that uh, in this video, but, you know, it's not just sort of, oh, you know, here you are in a dungeon, go kill some monsters. Uh, there's a little bit to read there, and uh, it's nice, the tale is uh, nicely told through. Uh, some really nice drawings or paintings, I guess. And, uh, you know, all in all, it's, it's a pretty good game. So, gameplay-wise, I'd, I'd be a 3 out of 5 on that. I'd say especially this would be of interest to people that, that really liked the classic Bard's Tale games back in the day. That's what it reminds me of uh, uh, more than anything. Uh, you can really get into a nice groove of uh, finding a couple of battles and then your characters are almost dead and you're like racing back to that end, you know, just with the bated breath, hoping that you won't uh, encounter anything along the way. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of rare a game that can give you that kind of a level of excitement. Uh, so again, it's not going to win any awards for graphics or sound or anything, but just in terms of gameplay, I think it really it really holds its own. So all in all, I'll go a 3 out of 5 on this one too. And as of this video, it's $15 on Steam. Alright, so let's uh, finish up here. I want to show you this, this uh, final game here. This is called The Fall of the Dungeon Guardians. And it came out November 6, 2015, and it's by Mana Games, M-A-N-A -A Games. And at first, uh, just looking at the screenshots on Steam, I thought this was kind of another uh, Legend of Grimrock clone, uh, you know, Cold Fire Keep, that sort of thing. But it's definitely uh, distinctive in terms of this combat engine. Uh, it is in real time, as you can see, although you can hit the space bar to pause it and queue up some commands. Uh, to me, it just, you know, I played a lot of this game and I'm still just a little bit shaky on uh, the interface. And I'm not quite clear that I'm <laughs> doing this right or, uh, you know, how to tar make sure that my guys are actually targeting things and not just standing around. It's, uh, just that sort of weird thumbtack-like icon there to select all the characters. So it just, it feels a little bit uh, loose or rough somehow. Uh, which is really not what you want in a, in a game like this. You want really tight controls. You want to feel confident uh, that you know how to uh, issue commands and control your characters. But, uh, you know, your mileage may vary with that. You know, I just, I wasn't quite clear on the how this uh, these cooldowns work and the universal cooldowns and <laughs> all that good stuff. I'm not a big fan of this obvious uh, Android slash, you know, tablet origin of the game. I'm pretty sure that's why there's... Uh, it's got those uh, arrow keys down there, those directional keys. So if you were using a touch screen, you could just tap that. I mean, uh, it seems a little lazy to me to leave that in the PC version, you know, frankly. You know, they could have saved all that real estate and done something more useful uh, with it. Uh, but, you know, those little nitpicks aside, 
Uh, graphically, this one is maybe the best of the bunch. I mean, you, nice shadows, nice uh, lighting. These animations look good. The 3D models for the monsters look good. Uh, music is pretty much just uh, that sort of droning, uh, you know, creepy sounds <laughs> type soundtrack, which is appropriate. You know, nothing uh, really spectacular there, but at least it's not annoying uh, or repetitive or anything like that. The level design is, is pretty good, I, I think. There's lots of uh, levels to this dungeon. You know, again, sort of like the one of the things I liked about Legend of Grimrock was you could really tell they had put a lot of thought into the layouts of their dungeons, which is kind of a big deal with this, this dungeon crawler genre. I mean, you just you don't want just a bunch of flat, you know, rooms. <laughs> uh, you want lots of secret areas, lots of ups and downs, and it's a pretty fun place to explore. Again, I'm not really sure how big of a team is responsible for this game. It is kind of hard to tell nowadays, right, with the... There's so many free assets available and these powerful tools. Uh, but it looks good. And they totally nailed that immersive dungeon crawling experience. Also appreciate that you can actually see your uh, character portrait and the inventory. And uh, you don't just have, uh, you know, sword plus three. And there's a sword plus four. I mean, here we actually have names for things. And uh, it just looks, you know, they're able to use that artwork to make a better looking, a better sword look better. You know, if you follow... Uh, so I think that's, it sounds like a little thing, and, you know, maybe it is, but to me it makes the game more enjoyable when you have a kind of a visual reinforcement that your characters are indeed getting better and stronger, and uh, you're finding better stuff as you move along. I gotta be honest, uh, I don't really like this combat system. You know, I see what they were trying to achieve there, but it just, it never quite grew on me. Uh, you know, if you remember the original Dungeon Master game had this, Really simple uh, cooldown system. Uh, it wasn't so intense, so much stuff to keep track of, and just I think they just kind of overdid it here. Even though you only have basically two abilities, uh, the fact that you have those two abilities in addition to an, uh, a melee attack uh, just just kind of makes it hard to keep track of what's going on. You know, you just feel like you're always looking down there at cooldowns, trying to make sure the guys are attacking and not just standing there. You know. It, Again, I just, I just never really settled into this, uh, this interface. Uh, on the positive side, though, you know, graphics are great, the atmosphere is great. Uh, and they really nailed that, that immersion, immersion factor, which I think is really key with a dungeon crawler, right? Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and rate this game. Then graphically, I'll go 3 out of 5 on here. Uh, the dungeons all look great. I like that you can actually see the equipment. Uh, they kind of... Uh, Skimped a little bit there, you know, you just have the little icons there. They don't actually show the equipment on the character. I guess they didn't want to create, uh, have to worry about creating 3D models uh, for all that. But, uh, you know, it's just a little thing. I I'd be happy going uh, 3, maybe even 4 out of 5 on the graphics and artwork here. Uh, really nice animations, looks slick. In terms of audio and sound, uh, it definitely gets the job done in terms of setting the right mood. Uh, there's no really uh, memorable uh, musical scores or anything like that, but... Uh, the sound effects are all there, so I'm going to say 3 out of 5 on that. Uh, Gameplay-wise, it does uh, ca recapture a lot of that. You know, if you really like, the, if you find those uh, Grimrock games, uh, lots of fun, I think you would like this too. Uh, the only thing that kind of mars that a little bit is this combat engine. It's a little bit cumbersome in my opinion. That kind of detracts from it a little bit. It's like they couldn't decide if they wanted something uh, sort of fast-paced and reflex-based, or if they wanted to, to keep pausing it and queue up commands and... You know, almost do a turn-based style, turn-based, real-time with pause, I guess I should say. It, it, it feels like it's kind of unsure what it wants to be, right? But, you know, again, your mileage may vary, and, you know, who knows? You play this enough, I guess it just becomes second nature to you, but, uh, you know, I was never able to get to that point where it was just felt natural. Uh, so, I'm going to go, uh, as far as gameplay, 3 out of 5. You know, if, if I could get comfortable with that combat system, I'd be willing to go 4 out of 5, but... Uh, in any case, I don't think they quite reached the level of a of a Grimrock game. <laughs> of course, I'm a little biased there. I, re I just really love that uh, both those uh, Legend of Grimrock games. Uh, so when I saw this was kind of similar, uh, you know, I wanted to play it, but you know, maybe I'm being a little unfair to it, comparing it too much to that Grimrock experience. But anyway, I think overall with this one, I'm going to go. I'm really torn here between three and four, but I'm going to probably go three out of five uh, again on this. It definitely has some things I like. You know, I think it's a, it's a nice idea to try to mix uh, the World of Warcraft style uh, 
uh, trees, uh, for example, here you can see those uh, skill trees kind of reminds me of uh, the early uh, days of uh, World of Warcraft when they had trees like this. You can see how this uh, interface can get more complex as you go along with more commands. I mean, that's a lot you can do with those characters there, right? So there you have it, folks. Three indie CRPGs. And I'd love to know what your take is if you've played any of these. Or if you pick one up, you know, drop me a line. Let me know what you think about it. Do, you know, would you give it the same score as I did? Uh, I'd love to compare uh, notes on these. But, you know, I just think in general it's it's good to support the uh, the indie scene. You know, if you do, if you are one of these guys, and I get lots of comments and emails from people that uh, they like to reminisce about the good old days, and they say, you know, all the there's so many sequels out there now, and all the big budget games are all so similar. And, you know, you know, I ask, have you, have you looked into the indie scene? You know, yes, you're you're not going to see the same uh, level of quality in terms of graphics and animation and cutscenes and all of that business, but uh, you might. I think it's more than compensated for by more originality and more diversity. Basically, all of the stuff that uh, people complain about is uh, missing from those big budget games. So, so definitely uh, take a good hard look at indie games when you see them. And you know, I would even go so far, even if you don't necessarily uh, want to play the game, if it's cheap enough, you know, why not go ahead and buy it? That way, it's in your library, and you'll uh, you might want to play it one day. And in any event, you will be supporting these uh, these indie guys keeping these uh, games coming out. So there's that. Anyway, I'll leave it off there. Uh, let me know what you think about these games, as well as uh, if you want to see more of these sort of indie roundup reviews, let me know. And I'll see you next time. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let me know what you think about this uh, roundup uh, format. I thought it was kind of fun to look at multiple games all at once like that instead of uh, just one game at a time. But uh, let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear uh, your feedback on it. Uh, if you have suggestions, maybe I'd like to hear that too. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much for your support of the show. Uh, not a lot of you guys are supporting me on Patreon. All I ask is a buck per episode. Uh, it's about a buck a week usually. Uh, if you want to do that, just sign up on the Patreon site. Uh, also appreciate you guys who tell others about the show, post about it on Facebook or Twitter or whatever kind of social media you're connected to. Really appreciate that, guys. So, uh, again, thank you very, very much. Uh, hopefully, I'll have another episode out soon. It's uh, taking me longer these days to put these out simply because of uh, lots of stuff going on at the day job uh, at the uh, St. Cloud State, as you can imagine. Uh, also, being out of town and just various uh, nonsense, but hopefully I'll be able to put these out on a weekly basis again, starting uh, very soon, hopefully. And by the way, I have uh, some really awesome guests lining up. Uh, so really, you want to stay tuned for that. I think there's going to be some fantastic interviews coming up here very soon. So uh, stay tuned. All right. Uh, what about that news from the Matt Cave? All right, there's been quite a few developments since uh, we, since my last episode. I won't go into everything. Uh, definitely a couple of things, though, I think I just have to mention, want to mention. Uh, one is, of course, Wasteland 3. Uh, this has been out on Fig, which is kind of an alternative to Kickstarter. Uh, apparently, this was a great choice for them because they've already met their goal. They had a $2.7 million goal, and now they're getting uh, very close to $3 million. Uh, now, a lot of you guys probably played Wasteland 2, at least I hope you did. Uh, Wasteland 3, though, is going to have some big differences. Uh, one is a multiplayer, so you'll be able to play this with a friend. It's also set uh, in frozen Colorado, uh, so that'll be exciting. It's got a new uh, dialogue tree system. Uh, so anyway, this all looks uh, fantastic. And I was looking into this FIG uh, system, this FIG platform, and what's cool about that is, in addition to pledging, uh, as you would on uh, Kickstarter, uh, you can actually invest in the game and get a return on your investment. And so that is pretty exciting. I haven't uh, been able to try that out yet, but i really like to hear your guys. If you guys have invested, uh, let me know how that goes for you, and I'll uh, try to do the same. I don't know if they've quite worked out all the details of that yet, so anyway, stay tuned. I'll have more info about it hopefully next time. Now, also, uh, Steg wrote in about Tyranny Fate Binders uh, release date <laughs> reveal trailer. So kind of a, a big mouthful there, but anyway, there's a new video out, and you can uh, pre-order Tyranny, and uh, the game is apparently going to be released on November 10th, uh, 2016. So that's, you know, not that far off. 
of course, uh, Tyranny, the big deal with that game is you're playing in a, and let's see, uh, uh, in Tyranny, the grand war between good and evil has already finished. Uh, so there's some interesting stuff going on there with uh, morality and I guess whether you could play as a good character or an evil character. Anyway, it looks like a pretty interesting game for sure. So I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on the trailer as well as just uh, what you think about this Tyranny game. Uh, do you think it's going to be as good <laughs> as it seems? Uh, and then final, a uh, final bit of news here. Uh, my good friend, a uh, masochist, he's apparently going out of, uh, going away and he wanted to give me some of his antiquities. I'll just read a little bit of this letter here. Uh, greetings again from your trusted supplier of antiquities and rare ales. I intended to send these rare gifts to decorate your newly conquered lair, AKA the mad cave. Uh, but I was away. I believe these items will make an excellent addition to all guests giant rats, and anyone else who dares to be taken prisoner in your newly established kingdom. So uh, thank you very much, Mask. Because uh, he sent me several different kinds of uh, little collectible cards and things, uh, Star Wars and stuff. Uh, but i just show you some of the game-related stuff. Uh, this is one of my favorites. is uh, actually Tabula Rasa. Uh, this is uh, Richard Garriott's, uh, you know, failed, basically, MMORPG. A lot of people were really excited about it, I guess Masochus was, so he sprang for the uh, limited collector's edition. And just like you would expect from Garriott, uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here. Uh, there's a little uh, uh, dog tags, there's a little token, little coin thing, as well as uh, some really nice manuals and all this stuff. And I actually liked, I actually played Tabula Raza. I was uh, pretty invested in it. It's kind of sad that it didn't really take off, but uh, anyway, this is really cool. Great little collectible. I bet you a lot of people didn't even uh, hold on to these uh, when the game collapsed. So, uh, you know, of course, I will hold on to mine. Uh, he also sent me a couple of uh, Doom books, Doom 2, uh, the official strategy guide, and uh, Doom, the lost episodes. And, and these, uh, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys have probably had books like this of your own, but just in case you haven't, you know, there, there's a lot more stuff in here than just the strategy guides. Now, you get a lot of sort of uh, behind-the-scenes stuff in these, and just... You know, even if you're a big fan of the game, you'll probably learn more about it from these guides. So uh, I like to collect those as well as the games. Uh, but really, the coolest thing I think he sent me was uh, this Rambo. Where does he get this? A uh, Rambo First Blood 25th Anniversary Edition knife. And <laughs> what, a, what a blade this is. This is a, you know, it's got this nice sheath on it. You open this thing up and it's, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing I would have... I mean, anybody would love that likes Rambo, even if you don't like Rambo. I mean, it's a great blade. Uh, it's got a little uh, screw, little thing you can take out there with a, a compass on it. And there's some, like, magnets. I mean, magnets, some uh, matches and things. And this uh, little waterproof case here. I think it's got a little bit of fishing line on there. It's, uh, it's really cool stuff. You know, in case of a uh, zombie apocalypse, you know, you'd really like to have this, this around, but... I mean, I'm just really impressed with the quality of this thing. It really feels like a really solid, solidly uh, engineered knife. Uh, way better, actually, than my uh, Bear... I have a Bear Grylls one, uh, too, but I think this Rambo one is the one I would uh, reach for <laughs> in, in, the, uh, in the event of a real, uh, you know, survival scenario. So anyway, thank you, Masochist, for all this awesome, awesome stuff. It's really, uh, really great. So let me see if I put that in there right <laughs> If I don't uh, kill myself trying to reholster the thing. There we go. So anyway, thank you very much, Mascus. Really a treat. Oh, and there's uh, one other thing I forgot. Uh, he also sent me this, uh, this uh, print, I guess. This little poster of, uh, as you can see there, King's Quest. Just kidding. I know. It's Ultima. <laughs> uh, really fantastic. This is going to be great for the Mat Cave. So yeah, thank you guys. I know... Uh, uh, some of you guys have these big collections and your wives or whatever want you to, uh, to get rid of them. I mean, please don't throw those in the garbage. You know, if you if you got old gaming stuff and you want to get rid of it, you know, just, just let me know. I'll uh, even take care of the uh, the shipping for you uh, if it comes to that. But uh, definitely, if, you, if you're thinking about, should I throw it away or give it to Matt, you know, give it to me. <laughs> I really appreciate it. So. Anyway, thanks again, Mascus. That is awesome. All right, uh, what about that ale of the week? Uh, so this week I've got a, uh, what looks like a red stripe Jamaican style lager, which I'm actually, uh, I've always liked red stripe, nothing wrong with a good red stripe, but uh, what this actually is, is a, a mead. 
and it was uh, uh, home brewed and sent to me by uh, Mr. Mascus, who also sent me all this other uh, wonderful stuff. He really is, I think, I'm thinking he's a good candidate for number one <laughs> uh, Match Hat fan of all time at this point. But anyway, uh, he sent me this, and I'm, I'm really excited about this because I like meads. I don't really get to drink them that often. You know, I don't even know where you, where you buy those. Uh, but I've never had one that was actually brewed, home brewed. I didn't even know that was a thing to brew your own mead. So uh, really, really cool. I'm really excited about this. Uh, so I want to get this open as soon as possible and let you know all about it. All right, so I got some of Masochus's mead here in the rather excellent drinking horn. I've been uh, smelling this. It smells really great. I don't really know how to describe it, though. It's a... Uh, it smells a little bit like a, maybe like wine, really. Uh, maybe like a, a sherry or a, maybe even a port, but just a really, really sweet wine, what it kind of smells like to me. Maybe even a barley wine, uh, if you like those, if you know what those are, which, by the way, I highly recommend. Uh, anyway, it smells really, really good. Now, I've got to say one other thing. You know, if you're going to drink something out of, a, uh, out of a drinking horn like this, a mead seemed like the uh, ideal uh, beverage, right? I mean, can you imagine drinking mead out of a can or you know pint glass just uh, seems sacrilegious somehow you really need a drinking horn for that optimum uh, me drinking experience but anyway <laughs> uh, let's give this a taste <clears throat> well uh, first of all <coughs> i don't think a masochist was uh, playing around in terms of alcohol, holy hell, you know, that <laughs> almost uh, made my uh, mist go uh, sort of, uh, my vision go kind of misty when I uh, sampled that. I don't know what the alcohol content on this must be, but I'm guessing really, really high. It's actually kind of drying out my uh, throat, so that's usually a sign that it's very uh, alcoholic. Uh, but it's very flavorful too. A lot of a sweet... Uh, Sort of just like what I would expect from a mead. You get those a lot of a, a sweet, sort of a little bit of a citrusy, but mostly kind of a, a sort of a grape-like uh, flavor is kind of uh, how I would describe that. A lot of honey-like overtones to it. Let me try it again here. Yes, this is... Uh, <laughs> it's like the strongest mead I've ever had. And I thought some of those meads at the Renaissance Festival are, are strong, but this is more like... You know, it's, when you first put it in your mouth, it's kind of like a really sweet wine. And then it really dries out your throat. And then you're kind of left with like a, a sort of like you just did a shot of uh, bourbon or something uh, on, the, on the aftertaste there. Uh, definitely not something I would want to chug quickly. I don't think Mas I think Masicus is not one of those guys that plays around when he's brewing his mead. Let me put it that way. I'll try uh, one more uh, taste here. I definitely want to sip on. Uh, but man, this will, if this won't put hair on your chest, I don't know what will. So uh, I think this is excellent. I, I don't, I'm not really a mead uh, expert, a mead connoisseur. You know, I don't know really. I couldn't tell you the difference between a really great mead and a bad mead. But uh, I think this is really delicious. But I will say it's very, very strong. So if you're looking for uh, a mead that will put you on your ass, you probably want to talk to Masochus and see what, uh, what he can do for you. Anyway, I'm going to go with a 5 out of 5 uh, drinking horns on this one. Uh, it's really great. I would drink more of this uh, for sure, but very, very slowly and hopefully <laughs> not while I'm out boating or something. So anyway, thanks again, Maskets. It's been lots of fun. All right, let's uh, wrap this up with a quotation then. And uh, hopefully that uh, I can get this read before this uh, mead does its dirty work. Okay, uh, so this is, I was looking for quotes about creativity. And I thought this was a really, really good one. It's by uh, Scott Adams. And I'm pretty sure it's the cartoonist rather than the uh, game developer, but, you know, it could be either one. And it goes something like this. Creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. You know, that just sounds like great advice for, for any indie developer. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, see you next week.